Well, um, I'm Chad from Dispatch. I don't probably know as many as I should, but I've got a lot of familiar faces. I even know a few names, so that's good. Uh, uh, so, as I understand it, some of this is reported for uh, refresher training and for uh, perhaps for new users and new people. I don't really know. So, we've got to sort of divide it. Uh, first, we're just going to go over some basic stuff. Um, I hope it's not too basic for you, but uh, we are finding that some users don't know some you know, things about buttons and things like that. So it, it will be maybe a little bit basic, but uh, you know, sorry for y'all, and you can edit it out later if you, you don't like it. It's too basic. And then we'll kind of go into some detail about one thing that everybody knows is there, but maybe doesn't know what it is. That's the conventional uh, failover system. So just basically, the basics, uh, we'll start with system familiarity, a little bit about dispatch and what we're doing, and then we'll get really into the radio, the actual use of the radio itself. Um, so just just the radio system we'll look at real quickly, like I said, us, and then, you know, I'm pretty familiar with the, uh, the XTS, that's the portable, the XT also mobile, so I'm not so familiar, you guys may know a few things there you can help me out with. That's what essentially we'll cover here. Um, as far as the radio system itself in Butler County, we have sites, um, or, or concepts that matter are sort of the sites versus tower locations. There's a little bit difference there. Uh, we do have a lot of meters, and of course we do the voice paging as well. Um, we own infrastructure that's incorporated into the state system. So the state has a statewide interoperable communication system. We beefed it up within Butler to get some extra equipment in there. Um, it's ours. Uh, we have it divided into two sites. Is that any of y'all or somebody else? Okay. That was Andover? Oh, I thought it was Andover. So we have two sites here in Butler County, but the key thing here is that it's on the um, state system. So, yeah, we own the equipment, yeah, we own the radios, yeah, we can program equipment and radios, but the state does make a lot of decisions about what feeding shall you talk to somebody else who has a radio somewhere else is like this, and they can do something you can't do. That may not be us. Feel free to ask, but that may be the state. They've made some calls there. We don't have any control on them. So I say we have two sites in Butler County. We have site 44. That's up in Cassidy, it's one tower, and on that tower are six repeaters. Um, so when we talk about trunking, those repeaters are all available for you to use and key up. You never know which one you're going to be on, the system to take care of it for you, it's all on that. But the key is there's only six in Site 44. The rest of Butler County is Site 38, or it's just called the Butler Site. That's five towers all around the central part of the county. There's 10 repeaters on each of those towers, and they're all identical. So five towers, 10 repeaters. That's 50 repeaters, but only 10 of the only there's only 10 total. So when one tower transmits, all five towers can transmit. Real widespread. That way. That's really basic on front. I didn't mean, go into it just towers and sites are not the same. So the reason this is important is site 38 obviously, I mean that surrounds you. Site 44 is clear over there. Of course there's a site here, there's a site there, there's a site there in all the surrounding counties. The reason this is important is, is in case there's any sort of system failure, your radio may associate with a site separate from this site. All of these can talk to each other even if there's a failure generally speaking. But if you affiliate with Site 44, you will not be able to talk to people in your same talk group here on Site 38. So we're going to get into more detail later, but that's just a sort of an example of something that can go wrong. Uh, it shouldn't, probably has, uh, but that's a that's kind of a problem. So if there is a problem, if, if we do have to, if we do have some sort of problem, the problems are basically site trunking. You'll see it on your radio, it'll say site trunking or site trunk. And that basically again means you can talk amongst site 38 and you can talk amongst site 44, but you can't talk between them. Uh, or fail soft. If 
we have a fail stop situation. Basically, I said all those 10 repeaters can handle the trunking. Um, on fail stop, your radio just picks one and sticks to it. It can't trunk anymore. It doesn't know what to do. You keep your radio. You probably can't talk to the guy right next to you, but you can talk to some sheriff's deputy. You know, God knows where. Uh, because in site trunking, it's just picking something so you can communicate with somebody. So that, that's a problem that we could have. If those problems present, there's a backup radio system in place, kind of similar to the old 400 system, if you're familiar with that. That's the backup system. We're going to get way more detail later. But it's made up of conventional 800 megahertz repeaters spread around the county. And when we talk about those operations, we're talking about conventional failover operations. Uh, our paging system is uh, for voice paging. This is what trips your pagers. It's not part of the 800 megahertz radio system. It's still VHF. Uh, it's coming from six towers simultaneously at 300 watts. So there's pretty good coverage. Initially, there was concerns that maybe one tower wasn't enough. That old paging one paging tower is still around, but now there's a whole separate six-sided uh, paging system. Make sure you pages. Any questions about the radio system? That's extremely basic. Any questions? Is that too basic? Any questions at all? So dispatch, just real quickly, I want to kind of get into what, what we're doing there. Again, I'm sure you know, uh, but for the purposes of perhaps we hire some A little bit about what, what we do, our responsibilities, but the common codes. We've had some long-time firefighters ask us about some codes we use, and so I do want to kind of get into those just in case you know, some are not familiar with. And then we'll talk a little bit about, if you hit your emergency button, what we're going to do down in dispatch map. You've probably seen it before, but in case you haven't. So we answer 911 calls for Butler County, except for Andover and Augusta. They have their own 911 centers. They transfer to us if they get an EMS call. We transfer to them if we happen to get a call on their fire district. We run three consoles. We've been down there. Uh, sheriff is our console one. They dispatch sheriff. They just any state agencies, uh, and that can come up uh, if you deal with some cop control or state agency comes up. Uh, that's State agency committee comes up to help you out with traffic control. That's where we would talk about that. And, and I think they could probably move over to our event channels. EMS, fire, and county police are all handled on console two. County police is all the smaller towns, Benton, Rose Hill, the college campus police, things like that. Console three is El Dorado. Um, we have five different call signs. You guys always use county fire for the most part. Um, but the reason this matters is. Basically, we don't change talk groups the way you change talk groups. We have different radios set up for every talk group we use usually. We have to go looking for it sometimes. They're, they're just on a big page on our computer screen. So we use these call signs to kind of get us an idea of who we're talking to. So if you would find yourself on sheriff and you want to talk to the sheriff dispatcher, you would not want to use county fire. You would want to say El Dorado Fire 123 Sheriff. You're, you're talking to sheriff. Um, dispatch, we use for EMS. Uh, that tells us you probably want to talk to the EMS dispatcher. County fire, again, that's what you usually use. Butler County tends to tell us, this one, this turns into many different things, but Butler County tends to tell us you want to speak to the county police dispatcher, whoever's dispatching for Benton, whoever's dispatching for the, the college police or something like that. Uh, and then El Dorado, you want to talk to the El Dorado dispatcher. So I'm going to bring that up to point out that, that if you want to talk to a specific person or a specific console, then you may want to use a different console. Um, cat paging. We'll talk about cat paging real quickly. Um, it's cool, but it's kind of, it's got some quirks to it. So the digital page is just a function of the cat system. You put elevator fire on a call, cat page goes out. So just assigning you, it, it's automatic, uh, putting you on a call in cat. But CAD pages are reliant on an internet connection. Our internet was down last night for about four hours. That's the longest four hours of my life. But it was down, and during that, during that time, CAD paging was down. It's just not going down. They're convenient, but they're not reliable. They're not a reliable method. So I just want to kind of mention that really, you know, we would count on it if you're, if you're in a hurry. I would not count on CAD paging. Yes, sir? Is it only available during the, when you make the initial assignment? Um, basically, yes, but there are some some uh, 
I see some tricks we can use to send it out again. I can manually send a CAD page for a call, and because um, you dispatch by, we don't tell you what truck to take, things like that, we just tell you elder at fire. I can tweak the system by, I dispatch elder at fire station one again, I can send a manual CAD page to elder at fire station two, or elder at fire in general, elder at fire A, those are, those are, it's always to you, it's just you, but to us, it's just because CAD has to continue to have options to assign you a CAD to end. So I can kind of trick it, yeah. The, the reason I ask is like for, for when we make recall, mm -hmm. it would be nice if there was a CAD page that came out of each of those page outs. Yeah. Um, I know, so we only, we never get a CAD page except for the initial alarm. Right, 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 right. And any sequential alarms after that. So it would be nice to say something like, you know, this is a digital page, a crew recall station. Right. I can see that. You know, if a guy has left his pager at home by accident or something, he won't know what's going yeah. on, or he won't know if he got repoed. Yeah. Again, if the system's down, that's bad, but it's right. better than nothing. I can right. understand that. So that's something we can look into. Um, I'm not prepared to bring a pen in there. But, uh, yeah. Hey, Chad. Yes, sir. When, uh, I've noticed sometimes we'll get paged out on our say, EMS call, uh -huh. and then the crews will be out, and the call will st still be open, and we'll receive another call in that the same time frame while the call is still open, and we won't get a CAD page on the second call. Why is that? I don't know. You know ELDFA? Oh, okay. ELDFA doesn't go out and don't have CAD page. That's my guess. That so that's interesting because the answer to your question was I can trick it by assigning the LDFA and he's saying that maybe maybe because we A again, A is just something. We just need something else. So right. explain the LDFA. Yeah, the so yeah, basically in order for us to continue to get say we just had an LRO fire and there's a fire in your district and I assign you to that call. Next fire or something that comes out uh, in your district, it's gonna recommend to Londa or Roselli or somebody because uh, it thinks there's only one. So we just built A, B, and C. So that's that's a possibility. I don't know. That's not good. Um, you know, there could be a technical issue there. Like you can't send one on cat page with an X amount of time. That is a Jeremy question. There's a lot of Jeremy questions, but I'll forward that to you. So basically, you say two calls come out close to on time. You get the first cat page, you get the second. Right. <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. You'll have to edit the video later, but that's fine. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, edit that whole suit stuff I say. Uh, any, any other questions about the cat page there? Alright, it is, I mean, it's, it's nice. It's pretty cool. I, I like it, you know, just from a curiosity standpoint. Nothing else, but um, it's not always really reliable. Uh, you know, and it probably shouldn't come up too often. Like I think two incidents is where it caused a problem. One is um, one agency had possession of another agency's truck, and they took that truck to a fire. I don't know why this happened. <laughs> they had possession of somebody else's truck. They took it to a fire, and they identified themselves as that agency's truck, so whatever it was. But we assigned them in CAD to the call. What happened? CAD page went out. Now that department thinks they got assigned to this fire, so they all come on it. So um, it's just something to watch out for. It's not a problem. It's just something to watch out for. Um, the other thing was like uh, a Tawana firefighter stopped to help and save my water and stuff to before the other day. And uh, that was nice of him. And certainly for his own safety, he's more than welcome to check out with us. But what happened? Put Tawana fire on a call for a disabled motorist and. Then go on the page, well, well, you know, it's taken care of, but you know, it's just something that can happen. So just be aware that that's how CAD pages act. That's all that's what we're going to bring up. Um, so our operations, our communications officers, we're going to record your relevant times associated with agency response to the incident. So en route, things like the, the, the times you call for. But the, the trick is that's by the agency, not by the truck. So if you want to know what time squad three showed up versus if you 10, good chance I don't know for sure. I mean, I can't find it. We do the best we can to record those individual times, um, but it's it's a it's sort of a balancing act at 
that point. Yes, I got that time. You went to, 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 your agency went out. But those individual times, that could be sort of a, a sort of a, 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 a trouble spot for us. Uh, that's why it, was, it is real convenient. Like I said, the first truck arrives on scene, you're on scene. The last truck leaves, you're clear. If you are the last truck, it'd be real nice to say, you know, squad three, clear and available, show all the real fire units clear and available. And I think most, most of the time you guys do that. But I just wanted to bring it up. Uh, it does help us a lot. So, common TIN codes. This is like half of them, but they're common. The others, not so common. Um, and plane speak, and I'll say it later, plane speak is barred. I'm concerned about the boss, but if you want to give me plane speak, hey, I'm, I can deal with that. That's fine. If you have questions about what we have to say, just ask us. Plane, plane speak. Plane speak. Oh, you're plane speak. Okay. No, that's, hey, that's fine, but we, we're not. So you may hear these things from us. 10-7 um, out of service. Uh, essentially, we're going to use that anytime you're just not available when you're out of service. Um, you know, 1017, if you hear that one, we use that more with law enforcement. 1017, nothing for you. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm calling on you. I don't have anything for you. I'm trying to get your attention on the radio, but it's just because I want to know if you're okay. So a 1017 is sort of like a, uh, uh, a checking on you. On, on a 1017, you can say, if you hear that, I hope you don't, but if you hear that, you can just say I'm 10 4. You know, we don't have any codes for that. Like that. 1019 in station. 1021 dispatch, please. If you're not familiar, that's what's called on the phone. 1024, finished with assignment. That's one uh, where, where the way, I hope, you know, you're probably not using it, but don't, if, if you tell command, you're, you know, command says, hey, I want you to go put that bush out over there on fire while everybody else is doing this. If you go over, you tell command you're 1024, that's not really what we're talking about there. So, I mean, do with it what you will, but, you know, finished with assignment, we're thinking you're completely done. Um, 1033 emergency traffic doesn't come up very often, but the concept there is uh, 1033. There's a problem. There's an emergency. Not just like the emergency you're already out on. There's an emergency within that emergency that affects you guys. Stop talking unless you're actually trying to solve that problem. If you do need to talk, generally we'll give you some other channel. So if, if for some reason command declares 33 on event one, we'll declare 33 on event one, move all others to event two or something like that. Uh, shouldn't come up very often, but if it does, that's what we mean by 1033. Just going through a few others. 1042 is your home. That's not the station. Should be a problem, but I'll bring it up. 1046 is one of the number of things we work through. A drunk driver, 1046 accident will be a drunk driver caused an accident, or a person who's drunk might be referred to as 1046. Um, 1073 radio check usually. Usually that's coming back this way, your plane speed, no problem. We may say your 1074, 1074, 102. The radio works and it sounds good. That's basically all that means. 1077, no contact. Your 1080 is your partner, your passenger, 1084 is in the area. Oops, what about that? Okay. So some signals, some EMS signals. Uh, signal three, or we might say some of these signal threes crazy, maybe he's signal three from history, CAD, so we assign you to a fire, it sounds strange, you know, like, you know, there's a bush on fire that's not being consumed and the voice of God is coming from or something like that. Okay, I think our caller signal three, or uh, your CAD history shows this caller signal three. Um, it's not meant to be rude, it's just meant to give you the information. Signal four versus suicidal. Uh, it may also be signal three, but if they're suicidal, they're signal four. 32 is wanted. Um, I can't think of why that would come up unless you just happen to know you're talking to somebody who's wanted to pay information only. If you're ever assigned to a code of two, that's a sexual assault victim. Um, so if you're assigned to a code of two victim for an EMS call, that's kind of what we're talking about. I finally figured out where that came from in the in the system that Wichita PD used at one point to do their reports. They had all these codes and they just happened to be up to their code. And so it just carried over and spread out. Chapter 65 is a reference to drugs um, because Chapter 65, the Kansas State Statutes, used to cover drugs. There's no Chapter 65 anymore, but we still use that. If we tell you somebody's EMS signal 12, that means they may have some sort of infectious disease. It's information only because you may not already taken care of, but if we know, we're going to try to tell you. 
Uh, ETOH is another reference to alcohol. ETOH on board, you probably know more about that than I do. Um, code Orange, EMS recently started using Code Orange. So if we didn't know they were Signal 3, EMS gets on scene, it turns out all they are is Signal 3, they're going to triage Code Orange rather than Signal 3. We use the ALCO alphabet, or the LAPD alphabet, and Adam Boy, sorry, Adam Boy, Charles, you all heard that before. Uh, when you hear us typically make reference to the NATO alphabet, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, those are references to uh, our call taking software that we use and tell you sort of some information about the, the danger of that call in general terms. And Echo, for instance, is the most extreme case. Um, the Echo exists because there, it actually relates back to the fire department as they tell the story of the fire department. Somebody's having cardiac arrest you know, and having a heart attack right across the street from a fire station in some place, and they assign they don't assign the firefighters in that station in this call. They assign this station way over there, and this ambulance way over there, and they're coming up. Somebody finally runs across the street, gets the firefighters there, they come out, save the day. They want to know, why didn't you pay to do that call? This didn't happen here since, you know, assault the station. So they say, why didn't you want to, why didn't you want to sign us to that call? Well, you got a ladder. What are you going to do with a ladder? You know, well, you're going to drive it there and save the guy, but the point is that, that CAD didn't understand that certain apparatus don't matter in certain situations. The echo exists just to let us assign anybody to anything. I can put the time <coughs> pressure on it. Anything, just get somebody there as soon as possible. Um, and like I said, anytime you don't know what we're talking about, you don't understand the letter we're saying, you don't understand the code we're saying, you can ask us. If we need to keep it private, we may turn on encryption. If you need to keep it private, you may turn on encryption. It's probably, again, uh, a good alternative. But there are some concerns there you know, with encryption. I don't know if I can get into this later or not, so I'll hit it now. If a radio was programmed by Butler County, the encryptions work with each other. So you don't have to turn it on to hear it. So a sheriff's deputy, he has his encryption on and he's talking, you can hear it. But we don't program all the radios that are in use in this county. For instance, um, highway patrol. Any, any state agent, maybe a fire out in El Dorado Lake. So those guys out the lake, not have our encryption. So if you turn it on to say something private, that's great. You forget to turn it off, and then you gotta tell them something important later, he will not hear you. So that's something to keep in mind. Keep your encryption off if you don't need it. Radio aliases. Uh, each radio has an ID number. You've probably seen them. Our radio computer lets us take an ID number and give it a name. So we can, we can make it say Bob, we can make it say George, or we can make it say Engine 10 or whatever. So as you know, that's by and large, that's been taken care of. Uh, but if you get a new radio, you trade radios, you change radios, that's something to let us know. Uh, all the on-duty supervisors can do it. If not, somebody can take a message and have somebody do it later. The benefit of the this is that it allows us to see who you are. So if I didn't hear you, I didn't copy what you said, you didn't come across, or you hit your emergency button, and I don't know who you are, that tells me who you are. But that's it, just who you are, and only with as much accuracy as has been provided to us. So so this one emergency buttons, orange button top of your radio, it's your radio in emergency mode. You probably already know that already. Um, but what's going to happen is your radio is going to automatically change to a predetermined top group for firefighters. That's uh, fire dispatch. Your radio then has priority on the system. There's no concept of priority. The state doesn't allow us to have any sort of concept of priority on the system for anything other than emergency. So you hit your button, and now those 10 repeaters, if they're all busy, you get to use one, other people don't. So that's kind of where that comes in. Um, that lets you talk to the talk. It doesn't tell you this, what you need, or where you are. That's one, some, some people think it tells us where you are. No idea where you are, you don't tell us. Uh, and it only tells us who you are if you created an alias. Like if that five digit number, um, that doesn't really help us. So tell us who you are, tell us where you are, uh, things like that. If you're on a call, of course, you well, we should know where you are. Uh, but if not, um, then let us know. Um, so you press the hold button for about a second, and it goes into emergency mode. Things start flashing in dispatch, all the volumes go up to 15, it's loud, things are flashing, we acknowledge it. Uh, your radio should say emergency on the screen. If you want to get out of emergency mode, again, you just hold it down until it goes off. If that doesn't work, turn your radio off and turn it back on. 
Um, if you go in emergency mode, dispatch will say very specific phrase. We'll only say this phrase. We won't say anything but El Rio Fire 123, checking your welfare. Checking your welfare is the phrase. And the only good response to that is code 99. Yeah. Anything else you're going to say, oh, this is some kind of, you know, he's held hostage and you can't get out. You can't tell us that he's code 99, so we better give him some help. Something like that. So um, it's going to, at that point, we're going to get kind of, get somebody else involved and maybe not what's going on. So checking your welfare, only response is code 99. If I say, if somebody says 1017, again, generally that shouldn't happen, but you know, if they haven't heard from me for a while and you just continue to see checks, they may still go ahead and 1017 you. And then you just want to say I'm 104 in that case. But checking your welfare, code 99. Questions about that so far? Okay. If you're on the in, if you're on an incident, you're on the event channel, and you have some problem and you need to hit that emergency button, keep in mind that it will disconnect you from command. When you leave the event channel and go to fire dispatch, it's great, puts you in contact, you know, with us, and, and it's good for if they're just yapping away back and forth, and you got something important to say, it's going to get you moved over. But it doesn't necessarily give that message directly to dispatch, so um, or directly to command. Excuse me, it's going to have to go through us and back out again. So um, don't use emergency mode basically to make contact with command. Um, it gives you priority, and that's great. It takes you away. From we're going to let command know that it's been uh, activated and, uh, you know, hey, if we confirm it's accidental, we may not say anything to command. But if we can't, or if there's something that says, oh, well, I can't get a hold of this guy now, maybe you cleared it real quick and went right back to what you're doing without telling us. Hey, I don't know. I'm just going to let command know. You know, it's his problem then at that point. Uh, if you're not assigned to a call, we don't know where you are. doesn't mean don't use it. It just means you're going to have to have some Truthfully, um, you got a cell phone in your pocket and a radio on your hip, and you have a problem for some reason you can't speak, probably better to dial 911 on your phone and just never say anything because I can get a location from your phone. I can't get a location from your radio. Any questions there? I hate to even ask this, but any questions about what we do with dispatch? That's racing business there. I'm sure Kay will answer them all already. <laughs> Said he slept a lot. Right. Probably did. Yeah. That's why he's there anymore. Yeah, that's why he's tired anymore. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, real quick, XDS 2500 will cover <coughs> and charging your batteries. There's a lot of rumors about all of that. General layout of the radio, uh, top groups and zones, and then, yeah, just your basic things are actually going to be used. So, the batteries. You're going to put a battery on, make sure the batteries turn them off. This is, this, in my analogy, is this is like late 90s computers. That's what these are. Pretty powerful, you know, for the 90s. Um, they're powerful in terms of radios, but you just only go yanking the power cord out of your computer. So turn your radio off before you take the battery on and off. Uh, make sure you get your little tabs lined up, you know. It doesn't quite make contact. You may have some intermittent contact. You don't have those tabs lined up. So if you're going on and off, like, why is this thing not working? Just double check those three tabs at the bottom line. And just snap it into place and call it place. Uh, everybody should have an impress charger or a six, you know, six gang charger, um, or smart charger, basically. They're not going to overcharge your battery, so you don't have to worry about that. You just have to worry about with radios that your batteries would get a memory or would overcharge or overheat. That's not the case anymore. It'll also recondition the battery when necessary. So old batteries, old radios, you had to. Turn them on and leave them on until they die and then charge them back up. This will do that automatically for you. It is a necessary thing, but this will be okay on that. How long do these batteries last? Shelf life? Shelf life? I don't know. Um, I read something about how many charges it goes. I can tell you I don't use my radio as often as I should, and I don't I my, my batteries don't really last charge. They don't seem to last more than a year or two. So, I mean, how bad until you got to replace the battery? Oh, okay. Um, you know, when I saw that number two, and I didn't think to write it down, and I should have. It was in the it was in the one hundreds. What's that? I thought I saw a hundred somewhere. But what? Next slide. Uh, it'll tell you when it's nearing the end of this slide. You pop the charger, it starts flashing red and green. So your battery's broken. So I'm afraid I don't remember exactly how many it was. Uh, 
I could probably find it out. I thought I saw it somewhere. Like in the Solid red, rapid charging. It's going to get up to 90% as quickly as it can. Um, flashing green. It's more than 90% full. It's not done yet. You leave it there, it's going to keep going. Solid green is fully charged 100%. And again, you can leave it in the charger at that point if you want to. You can take it out if you want to. It doesn't matter. It's just going to be, you know, like trickle charging at this point. It's going to stay charged and pull it out uh, and, and the charge complete. Steady yellow, that's the battery's reconditioning. This can take up to eight hours, so if that's a problem for you, just take it out, pop it back in, and it'll just charge it. Then the next time you put it in, it'll probably try to recondition. If that's okay, just let it go. Uh, it does need to happen periodically to extend the lifespan of the battery, but you can circumvent that process. Flashing yellow basically just means the battery can't charge yet. I don't know why. Um, leave it there, see if it gets better. If not, pop it out, pop it in. Um, for some reason though, flashing yellow just means it can't charge yet. Flashing green and red, like I said, that, that battery is getting close to the end of its life. You're going to have to replace it soon. So you know, let somebody know, hey, I'm going to need the battery. Um, flashing red, either the battery can't be charged because there's some problem with the battery itself, or it's just not quite in charge, right? So try reseating it, my help. And then when you do get a new battery over the battery out of the box, uh, the documentation says to charge it in the charge, in the impress charger until it's green. Uh, basically, if, if I understand it correctly, that's the only place where you worry about the network effect on a brand new battery. Universal connector cover. Uh, there's this little connector on the side of your radio. Pretty much everybody probably has a hand mic on it, uh, and that's good. But it's, uh, I mean, all those little copper contacts there, there's power going to those. So if you don't have a connector on there, bad things can happen. You get wet, you stick aluminum foil from a stick of gum next to it, you know, it can short out and break your radio. That's really a problem. So put a little cover on it or a hand mic or something. Um, and just basically just some references, uh, obviously the channel knob, 16 position channel knob, and then they call it three position zone select. All this is pretty straightforward. Uh, Motorola itself doesn't name these buttons because they are adjustable, they're set by the programmer. So in Butler County, this is your scan. If somebody else's radio somewhere else, it may not be scanned. So just keep that in mind. Uh, RSSI, I'll get to in a minute, and the encryption button down there. These are soft keys. If you had an old Nokia cell phone, you know, you had your menu and you scroll over and you push the soft key below that menu item. It's just like that. Um, and your home button, the little computer button or the data button is not used. So to get a talk group, channel one, zone one, that's probably the talk group you're using most of the time. I, I don't know. That's probably what you're using most of the time. Obviously, you can change your zone to A, and change your knob to one, and that gets you there. Or, you may not know, you can just press and hold the home button and it will ignore whatever physical settings you have on the radio and it will just go to channel one zone one. So you just hold home down and get where you're going. And that is useful um, in the dark, uh, if your backlight isn't coming on, if your screen's cracked, something like that. Or if we're in conventional operation, that can be useful. Um, the name of the talk group is displayed. Zones are not displayed. So if your zone has a name, may not know that. If channel 1 in your radio is fire dispatch for the first six zones, you know, that may be a bit of a problem. You may have to have a cheat sheet When you're receiving at that point, that's what it's going to look like. So yeah, but this is like a little, uh, you know, signal string kind of idea thing. This is the clock you can set in your radio, but mine always needs in from zero. That little battery indicator over there. There's some other symbols, we'll get to them. Your first three zones are position A, B, and C on that little knob that you got across the top, so that's uh, convenient. Or you press the nav button left to right until you see zone appear under one of those softies. Press the zone button, and you can scroll left to right through your zones. So your, your radios, I'm sure you've probably poked around with them. But you know, there's a lot more banks than maybe uh, that people were expecting. And home key, 
Once you've selected the channel or zone you want to get to, you press that home key briefly, and it selects whatever zone you were in and whatever channel you're on. You press and hold home, though, what happens? You expect it's on one channel, one of course, this will say to me. Just briefly press it. Uh, the transmitting radio, when you're receiving, so you're receiving audio right here in this little display, 20981, I believe that's one of the dispatch consoles, you see that. 209 tells you basically, 209 means dispatch is talking to you. Um, on our end, of course, if you took two radios, you want us to put an alias on the radio. You have a radio here, can you say, I want them to make this elevator fire 123. Is there a 123? Oh, okay. So you got, you, I want this radio to say elevator fire 123, and, and you don't know the number on it, you can get another one, key it up. So hold the radio upright, basically you want the antennas to match the antennas. This matters to you guys probably, and I'm sure there's probably tons of stuff. There's probably stuff on your end talking about it that, you know, down crawling around, if it's in a pocket in your jacket, the antenna now is out of the lineup with the receiving antennas, and that can cause you maybe to knock it out if you go digital. I think that's, from what I've heard, that's why the slings are kind of convenient, and they kind of hold it upright typically. Uh, speaker, you know, a little ways away from your mouth. You don't want to be all on it. That's kind of straightforward. You can only talk for a certain amount of time. So keep that in mind. Probably it's happened to you. you talk too long, you're going to hear that sound. Um, then you just unkey, and then you re key and start talking right now. Um, push, push to talk, you'll hear the go tones. Everybody's heard that by now, but just in case it's just shown to new users. That's it. Um, other tones are a problem. We talk about a bump or a bump or whatever you call it. Um, that means two users trying to talk on the same talk group simultaneously. Two of you key up at once, you're going to bump. Again, I'm sure you heard that. Um, this one, that's where I said we have 10 repeaters uh, on site 38. All 10 repeaters are busy. You're going to hear boo, 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 boo. You're going to hear the busy signal. Um, Another consideration there is, suppose you're over in Wichita, and you get a CAD page that says there's a structure fire in El Dorado, and you're off, and so you get this CAD page, and you're like, oh, I want to listen. So you switch to event one, and you start listening. There could be seven available repeaters in El Dorado for every piece of traffic that's coming out. But over in Wichita, when you're listening, there's no available repeaters, and nobody on the scene in El Dorado can talk, because you're limiting the system to the least common denominator. So if you if you are out of the area or off the site, if you can avoid it. You know sometimes the bosses they got a list and I get it, but if you can avoid it, don't eavesdrop. Don't turn it on in this because then you're limiting users at that fire. They keep getting a busy signal. Why am I getting a busy signal? I don't understand why I'm getting a busy signal. It's because somebody's in maze listening to the fire. Uh, that actually you remember that bridge collapse? Bridge collapse stuff in like Minnesota or something. I heard they had huge problems with that. Everybody on this big regional system, everybody wanted to hear what's going on. 70. Was that what it was? Everybody in the area wanted to hear what's going on. So they all turned on their radios, they all got on that talk group, and they had terrible communications on that. Not that cool. So scan, press the purple button. <laughs> I turn the scan on. I'm sure you've done that by now. <coughs> Um, the scan icon is this little zigzag thing here that tells you you're scanning. Uh, only works within your selected zone, so if you want to scan uh, one talk group in this zone and another talk group in this zone, that's not going to happen. That's going to scan in your zone. Uh, if, there's, if, you're, if you have channel one, zone one selected, and you're scanning zone one, when there's traffic on your talk group, you're going to hear that little beep that tells you, oh, this is on my on my talk group. Uh, and you're always going to be talking on your selected talk group. Some places may have a talk back feature where you can key up and quickly and you're talking on that last talk group that's active. That's not the way these are set up. Nuisance delete. Please don't, again, 20981. I'm pretty sure that's dispatch. Please don't nuisance delete. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, if, if, it's not going to nuisance delete me. It's going to nuisance delete event one. So. I, event one, that's a fire in Andover, and I don't really care about it, so I don't want to scan it. Next time they talk, I'm going to hit nuisance delete. And that, that uh, 
you're not going to hear anything from that talk group anymore until either you turn the scan off, turn it back on, or turn your radio on, or turn it off. Uh, encryption. That's this little button down at the bottom. It turns it on and off. And again, encryption is on and off refers to transmitting, receiving. If you have that encryption key, you won't always receive that encryption key. Some people call it secure, encoded. I think that Motorola calls it secure. Uh, if you have it, you're always going to receive it. But if you turn it on and try to talk, uh, then then you're encrypted. If somebody else doesn't have that key, they're not going to hear you. But most public kind of users should have that key. It's just your state agencies and other neighboring agencies. I was told we're not supposed to have that on. Well, it, is, it exists for the person it exists for, and I, I mean, when people say never, it, it, I mean, yeah, never, but it can be useful. So you need to talk about something, more as here's an example. Uh, you're headed somewhere for a medical call, you're well ahead of EMS, um, and I know the location of their team. I can have you call me, or I can turn encryption on, tell you the location of the team, or vice versa. You know something, in the field that the other responding unit is going to get there before you doesn't know. You want to you want to tell them. You want to let them know. You don't want it in the clear and scanner lane. Turn encryption off. Be useful for that. If you need to protect someone's privacy, it could be useful for that. So I wouldn't say never. You know, or talk. To, I'll, I'll say talk to your boss about that. But it could be useful. Uh, but it does have some real drawbacks. Um, yeah, and again, I don't know much about exactly what you guys do. God forbid, you know, there's a wall of fire approaching someone. You've got to tell them to get out of there because they're with the state park and they don't know any better. And you key up with encryption on and you say, get out of there, man. And everything I know about firefighting, I learned in movies. Um, exactly. But he's not going to hear that. He's not going to hear it if you're encrypted. It's there just not the same. So that's why I say use with caution. Yeah, it would be best to not use it. It's a tool. Uh, the RSSI button uh, can be convenient. Basically, you hit that little button, and it's going to say Butler, and it's going to give you a number. The numbers, I don't really know the range. It's not a percentage. I don't really know the range, but just, just know the figure is better. And the reason this button could be useful to you is if you happen to be somewhere near Cassidy and you don't want to affiliate with the Cassidy site, you can hold that button down and it will try to affiliate with the Butler site again. But if the Cassidy side or some other side it's just more powerful, and that's just the way it is. This really affects really affects agencies out on the uh, west side of the county. We used to have some real bad problems with people affiliating with Wichita there. But for a while they only had six repeaters and they were just busy now all the time. Alright, so that's the portable. That's pretty much the portal pretty straightforward. Again, you're probably all familiar with that. But any questions about the portable? Okay. Uh, XTL, they're mobiles. Um, so the same thing. Select and talk groups, general operations. It's the same basically as a few little oddball things here. So we'll just do um, Volume, brightness, yeah. Uh, but the, the knob here, the big difference there is uh, it's not, well, that's the volume knob, isn't it? No, this one here. Channel knob. Your channel knob. It's not numbered 1 through 16. So to make the example here, if you use your nav keys to change to a different talk group on this, and you hit home and you're in that talk group and you change the knob one position, it just goes to the next talk group. Now let's talk about your portable and go back and make an example. You're on talk group number seven, channel number seven. You change to another zone, uh, or you hit the home key. You hit the home key and you held it and it took you back to zone one, channel one. You change that knob. You're not going to go to the next channel. You were on seven, you click it, you go home, it took you to one, the knob stayed on seven, you click it to six, it's going to take you all the way from one to six. It's going to skip all those in the middle. So that's a little bit of a difference. Does that make sense? Did I explain that well? I feel like that is simple, but that it's easy. That's not the case on the vocals. It's just going to scroll through the next one, next one, next one. Uh, so yeah, change the knob. Change the top group. Press and hold the home key to return to zone one, channel one. Um, press the soft key under the zone menu. 
and then scroll left and right to scroll through your different zones because again you'll have like an ABC zone setting here. Solid red tells you that you're transmitting. Flashing red indicates you're trying to access the system. I'm not quite as familiar as these as it should be. You guys probably use these more than I do. I believe you may periodically see that red flash as that happen. Um, your radios are basically in constant communication with Site 3. They're just constantly checking in. So you may see a flash periodically. Scanning. I see these won't all be lit up at the same time. But there's your little scan icon there. Um, no scan listed. I don't think you can edit your scan list on your portals either. So that, but encryption right here. This is your encryption. I'm probably going to go through the middle. This is your encryption button on your mobile. So if you need to use your mobile, um, then that's where you did it. Again, in terms of using caution with encryption, probably be, in my opinion, it would probably be better to have a portable accidentally left on secure than a mobile. But then again, probably, probably depends. Uh, that symbol will flash and will tell you it's encrypted because again you won't know if somebody's transmitting you probably won't know unless you see that flashing so you see that flashing you're like oh yeah in 10 point you're traveling and by the way you're still encrypted so, color you can change the color of that screen here scrolling left to right pushing the uh, color button and then you can turn it on right you scroll through the color options and there'll be a SEL option under you press that off you choose that color. Uh, list, there's another menu. Uh, there's a little uh, menu item called list that displays your scan list. And site, again, press it briefly, it tells what site you're affiliated with it, press and hold to try to get to it. Emergency mode functions the same way. You're going to see the word emergency, alternative talk group name. Any questions about the phone? Very straightforward. All right, so then the real, you know, the, the main thing here, um, everybody knows it's there. I'm not sure everybody knows really how, how exactly it's supposed to be meant to be working. But the conventional failover operation. So again, we talk about that. We're talking about, um, for some reason, the trunking feature of your radio is not working. Maybe you went to site trunking. A few minutes in site trunking is not a big deal. Again, you'll know you're in site trunking because the radio starts to beep every 30 seconds. Beep. It's pretty annoying. Every 30 seconds, beep. It'll say site trunk. Um, but it can function like that pretty well for an amount of time. Um, but, the, you know, anything other than a few minutes, we're going to start thinking that there's a problem. Uh, and then fail soft. You just you don't even know who you're talking to. You just you, everybody's you're talking, but who's there? You don't really know. So if we have a problem, we're going to leave the trunk system and go to a separate system that, that's much like the way the old system was. Uh, and so for those of you maybe weren't familiar with the old system, then you start talking about analog modulation, where you know you're behind a tree, and so your transmission just sounds horrible. And then too far away, it sounds bad. I use this repeater and not that one. We used to have, used to have ops one, two, three, and four, and they went from west to east across the county. Usually, all the fire used ops three because that was your closest. Close used to matter. It doesn't really matter anymore. When we go to conventional failover operations. We're going back to where that matters. So, we'll talk briefly about the basic design of the failover system. Uh, kind of give you an idea of what we need you guys to do, and then we'll actually, can we can you know, turn your radio over for the failover operations. The way the system is laid out is, again, there are repeaters on towers laid out around the county. Those tower sites are named for the communities in which they're located. So Douglas, Deep Rap, El Dorado, um, they're just all over the county. In general, uh, to get good coverage all over the county, we're going to need two towers. So uh, we are going to patch and do what we call a console patch on two resources. Uh, they're down in dispatch, and that's going to cover the county. So what that's going to do is it's going to introduce a little bit of delay into the system because it's literally, you're going to talk on one repeater and one radio in dispatch is going to receive it, and it's going to transmit the audio directly out on another radio. So it's sort of like making a four-man repeater down in dispatch. So it's going to introduce a little bit of delay, a little bit of problems. 
But the, the benefit is we get that one large two tile resource with a very wide footprint all across the county. Uh, for the purposes of EMS and fire dispatching and the conventional system, we're going to use DRAP and Douglas. That's it. That's all you need to know. El Dorado Fire, DRAP. That's your conventional failover repeater. So all those other repeaters in there, all that, it doesn't matter. All you need to know for the purposes of getting your calls is I got to switch to DRAP. So go to site trunking. We've been there for 15 minutes. You know, we send out a page from dispatch and all units switch to conventional failover operation, zone 99, something like that. Switch to DRAP. DGRAP and Douglas patched together, it's going to fill the role of both EMS dispatch and public fire dispatch talk groups. So DGRAP and Douglas become one resource, and they cover two talk groups. And that's roughly the location of the tower. So DGRAP and Douglas patched together, that's your program. Um, so here's the department's assigned to DGRAP. Again, if they're not on this list on DGRAP, it doesn't mean you can't talk to them. They're just on double. We patch those two together so you can talk to them. Um, the dividing line is 100th Street, Southwest, <coughs> Southeast 100th Street. Um, or that's basically the cutoff. So if EMS units are south of there, the EMS units are going to switch to double. Again, it doesn't matter what we pass together and talk to each other. Um, so up to that point, everybody good? Fire dispatch becomes DRAP in your case. Alright, so the next thing is, okay, we assign you to a call, we're going to say operate ATAC 91, something like that. Uh, so we're going to use the nearest available 800 megahertz national mutual aid repeater channel. Uh, if you're not familiar with those, basically the National Mutual Aid Repeater Channels are channels that are set aside in each band for mutual aid operations or mutual aid situations by the FCC. They're the same everywhere. ATAC 91 is the same in Maine, the same in Kansas, the same in California, it's the same across the board. One caveat, which doesn't apply to you in these cases, but some places got licensed for it for their, for their normal use. I think McPherson uses one of the primary assignment channel. But basically all I'm getting at here is unlike event channels, they don't work countywide. Even though I said they're, they're the same pair nationwide, it doesn't mean they work nationwide. It doesn't mean they even work countywide. So here's their general rough location. Um, you might be assigned, you know, depending on, we have a little line to tell us exactly where to assign you, but available is available. So, you know, these would probably be the two you'd be most likely to be assigned. They're just in that bank, you just got to turn until you see ATAC 93. What may be useful for you is that these are always available technically, legally. It would be best if you had two different departments out on the fire before you chose to use these, but they are available if you just have a fan channel to go around. <coughs> they will use ATAC 93 or something like that. But again, legally, it would be best if you had a second fire department on the fire. Mm -hmm. So to review, DGRAP and Douglas repeaters attached into one resource for purposes of signing fire EMS, you guys are on DGRAP. So mutual aid repeal channels are going to be assigned to the, as the operating channel. What's y'all's home channel for conventional operations? Anyone? DGRAP. Okay. For conventional operations, DGRAP. Sorry, conventional operations. Any questions about that so far? At first, it didn't make any sense to me either until I, until I realized just, just pick one. Just go to your channel and you get there. So, your piece is to know your home channel, DGRAP. Uh, your piece is to know how to find it in your radio. Uh, given, given time, it's, it's pretty straightforward, but you know, better to figure it out now than later when it's time to switch. And uh, then it's just different. It's just different than our Trump channel, so you just kind of understand kind of how it's going to go. It's not going to be great. Uh, it's probably, I keep comparing it to the old system for those of you who are familiar with it, but even at that, it's going to cause some problems. Primary difficulty is uh, the delay when you key in and key the radius. So you key up and it's receiving on DGRAP, but it's, it's 
coming to dispatch, and dispatch is equipment is connecting it to Douglas, and then Douglas starts keying up, and you just gotta give time for all that to happen. With the trunk system, you key up, you start talking. You can all hear the delay, but it doesn't cause you any problems. You just start talking and the delay happens automatically. Conventional patched resource, you gotta you gotta count for that delay. Like key up, one, two, three, let's say we gotta say. Um, when you're getting ready for your turn to speak, somebody else just talk. Give it a second for all that to start shutting down. You know, it stops receiving, the patch comes down, the other one stops receiving, uh, and then you key up. So if you rush to get your traffic in, part of your traffic's gonna get cut off. That's just the way it is. If you rush, your traffic gonna kill. The worst part would be, um, something you don't really have to deal with now is doubling or covering other units. Yes, currently we can cover people with a bump sound, Typically, you don't actually miss anything with that bump sound because you hear that bump briefly and then their audio will start coming through even though you've got the key down. It's not going to be the case on a financial system. If you have the key down, you're not going to hear anything. Chances are nobody else is going to hear them either. You're usually the most powerful transmitter wins in those cases, but uh, you know, with this research, you just allows it. As I said, you could have some audio quality issues. Um, we're used to the digital world and and it's nice because it's all or nothing. You either understand, you know, pretty much everything we say, or you hear the digital artifact sound like transformers on radio. So, so we're used to that all or nothing effect. With the conventional system, um, quality just drops off gradually. Distance from the repeater, obstructions, things like that. Um, it's probably not a problem for you guys. You're pretty close to that deep draft repeater, um, but it could cause you some problems indoors. So patience and courtesy. That's always required, but in this case, it's definitely injured. So your conventional home channel, conventional home channel is? DeGraff. DeGraff. Am I saying it wrong? Everyone says DeGraff, I always say DeGraff. I feel like that. I feel like I'm saying it wrong. Uh, so again, after keying that radio, wait for a moment for the repeater to start transmitting before you talk. And then before you go to key up, when it's your turn to talk, give it a moment for that last piece drop off. Uh, there may or may not be some beats. I'm not sure if there's some beats in there. Uh, I'll tell you what's going to turn top. I doubt it. Any questions about that piece of it? I'm, I'm almost done here. So, so again, on conventional operations, um, they're all in one zone in your radio. We call that zone 99. I believe this model of radio is capable of having 99 zones in it. And we chose the last zone to put all these in. That makes it fairly easy to find. So again, if you, if you talk about, there are some, you know, you can use DGRAF. Again, whatever you need to expand your communication, DGRAF's available, you're, you're, you're fine with Trump. You say, you know, I'm going to send these five guys off to go do something, and they need to talk. You can put them on DGRAF in that case, too. So it may be convenient to switch back and forth into zone 99 versus going five zones that way. Just whatever works for you. But, Zone 99, the purpose of it is to help you find it quickly and easily. So, on your portal, return to your home channel, bank one, channel one, by pressing and holding the home key. Press the soft key under zone. If zone's not visible, then you need to scroll through until you see zone. But press the soft key under zone. Once you press zone, press the nav key one time to the left. Going to the left, uh, press it too far, hold home, go back, start over. So press zone, press left one time, you'll probably see Andover in repeater. Just press that little home key right there, just free for it. You're back in the normal operation with zone 99, it's just that easy. If you hold that home key though, what's going to happen? You go back to zone one, channel one, and you have to start over. But that's okay. Verify though at this point that you're not in direct mode. So yeah, you need to, you can go ahead and switch over to DGRAF or to graph or at whatever point you do that. But this is key right here. This little icon here, it's the line with an arrow point to another line. That's direct mode. Um, the trunk system, talk around isn't really there. If you have a talk around channel or a channel you refer to as talk around, it's a trunked, repeated resource, just like anything else, <coughs> private from the other things. This talk around 
skips the repeater entirely. So my radio wants to receive on this frequency. If I'm in direct mode, I key up. I'm transmitting on the receive frequency, so I'm skipping the repeater. I may not be able to talk to you. So in this image, we are in direct mode. To turn it off, we're going to press the RSSI button. Because there's no RSSI on it, so we just reposition that button, repurpose that button. And now the little icon goes away, that tells us now we are hitting the repeater. Uh, and then change channels as normal, 16 position channels now. When it's time to go back to normal, press the whole home and go back to what you were doing. Uh, so troubleshooting this process. Uh, if it doesn't seem like you're in the right zone, it's not making sense. So one place where this might happen is you might see 8TAC91 and think, oh, I'm good, I'm there. 8TAC91 is in a lot of banks in your radio. It's in a couple of places in your radio. So that may not be enough. So if it doesn't seem like you're in the right zone, press and hold home and start over. At that point, if you weren't on channel one, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and change to channel one at that point. So that, because what you're looking for, if you're in channel one, you're looking for and over and repeater. And that's, that's not what you're going to operate on. But that's going to tell you that you're in the right zone. Once you see that, you press the home key and turn the knob to, to the ground. All of the just repeated frequencies are on the C bank on your radio. I don't know if they're on C bank. They are on Are they? Okay. I can't speak for your particular program, so that's good to know. If that's it, then boom, switch to C and you're done. That's excellent. Uh, but uh, uh, Butler County wide. They are in uh, what we call zone 99. That's really good to know. That's good. If you don't see you making the repeater, verify you're on direct. If that little direct icon is on, you're not going to make the repeater. He can hear you right next to you. He can't hear you by mile. You see, if you hear a radio traffic that doesn't seem related to fire EMS dispatch operations, you're on, you're on DGRAP. Uh, they're talking about some sheriff deputy wants a 28. That doesn't sound right. Well, make sure you are on the graph. Uh, check to see if you're scanning. The scan will still work just the same way in this mode, so make sure you're not scanning. But chances are somebody else screwed it up. That's probably what happened. So just keep in mind, you hear things that aren't related really to what you're doing. Probably best if everybody doesn't jump on there and tell them you got it wrong. Give us a minute. We'll try to get him sorted out there at dispatch. We'll try to get him moved off the right side. Hey, if he's interfering, he's interfering, but uh, just consider that the other unit may have done something wrong. XL2500, pretty much the same thing. Again, you're just going to hit that zone in your little left arrow and get into the zone 99. This is the direct key. The direct menu item is DIR, because there's no permanently assigned key for that like there is in your portal. So she's going to show up right here, press that button, turns direct off. back into the Emergency mode operations. I wish I could say I knew exactly how these were going to go across the board. I tested a number of radios and a number of different agencies and they all behave differently. So I wish I could say exactly how it's going to be. It just don't know. But, but the key thing is the benefit of emergency mode in the Trump system is it gives you priorities on the system. That's its only advantage. So it lets you talk in place of other people you may want to talk. It gives you priority. Well, there's no concept of priority in a conventional system. So pressing the emergency button it doesn't necessarily do anything for you, you know, even at that. Um, other radio users may or may not see the activation. They may or may not see your ID, your ID number. As I said, there's no, there's no concept of priority on a conventional system. But I will tell you that all the agencies I tested, our equipment did not receive the alert from dispatch in convention. So, um, I just, I don't think it has any value to you in the conventional system at least at present. So just keep that in mind. At this point, if you want to do some radio tracks on DGRAP, that's just fine. There shouldn't be anything going on there. So, I mean, if you, if you want to toy with it, fine. If not, you guys are pretty familiar with radios. Uh, so that's that's pretty that's pretty straightforward. That's pretty much it for uh, conventional failover operation. Any questions there? about scene of action and training. Okay. And uh, training scene, channels. scene of action, uh, or what you might see, SOA1 or SOA2, those are simplex channels. Or by simplex, I mean they're permanently direct. Or by direct, I mean 
they don't have a repeater. There's no repeater associated with them. So those, again, are good channels to expand into. A, if you're, if you're out doing something and you want to sign a little group to go off and do something, the repeater system is working fine, the trunk system is working fine, you just don't need, you know, a thousand watts of five different towers to go, you know, two guys to put a bush on fire and put that out. You can just put them on SOA1 or SOA2. They can talk to each other while avoiding the whole system. Uh, or that's available for your use uh, in conventional operations as well. Um, training one and training two, those are trunked talk groups. Uh, they're available for training um, if you want to, if you're doing some sort of training and you just want to be off the system and you don't want to tie up one of your own uh, talk groups that's available. Um, they're almost like a bench up to that one. Um, but if you're actually doing something that's not specific to perhaps like an incident, like you, know, you want to be able to talk, you can, we, can, we can arrange for you to use conventions in that case as well. Training is available. And I guess another one that has come up recently is DBRS 1 and 2. That's in your zone 99 bank. Um, when I say zone or I say bank, those the same thing. Those words are changing. Zone and bank. Talk group and channel really hard, but we do use that way. So talk group and channel are the same as well. But DVRS is a, is, a, is a channel in your Zone 99, and that's for like a mobile repeater. Um, they're not in operation yet. That would be like, you know, you need to communicate, you need to be repeated, nothing available. Maybe that's not available. So they don't really do you any good. But SOA1 or scene of action, that's a kind of useful thing. Any other questions? All right, that's, that's all I got then. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right.